church. Woo! Hey guys, it's awesome that we can come together, eh? As one to worship the Lord. Hey, look, this morning what we're going to do, because we've got so many different people in our church from different nations, we just think it's a great idea to start off them praying and thanking God for watching over us over the last few weeks, three months actually, and also praying that we're one. That it doesn't matter what color of skin we have, it doesn't matter what country we come from, the bottom line is we've all got the one spirit. And it's great for people to know that it doesn't matter your background, where you come from, everybody is welcome into this building. So with that, we're going to be praying now, and then after that, we're going to be singing our full national anthem as a praise song to God. So guys, I'll hand over to the team now. Bless you heaps. Help you. South Africa. Almachtig Hemelse Vader, ons kom vandag voor u. En ons bid Vader dat u vandag eenheid in ons harte sal bring. Dankie vir vergifnis die u in ons leven vir ons gebring het Vader. Ek wil bid Jesus dat u vir ons sal herinner elke dag dat u een toonbeeld was vir ons Vader. Amal in u toonbeeld geskapen is, gee nie om van ras of geslacht die Vader. Amen. Andreina, Indonesia. Terima kasih Tuhan, kami boleh berkumpul kembali di tempat ini Bapa. Memuji, memuliakan namamu. Kami dari segala bangsa mau menaikkan, bersujud, berdoa, dan berkumpul untuk kemuliaan namamu. Tuhan, berkati kami Tuhan, berkati kebaktian ini dari awal, pertengahan hingga akhirnya. Dan kami boleh pulang membawa berkat dari padamu. Dalam nama Tuhan Yesus kami berdoa. Amin. Sophie South Korea. 하나님 저희가 자라노, 자라온 환경, 인종, 음, 나라 다 다르지만 여기서 한 자리에서 같이 기도하고 영광 돌릴 수 있어 감사합니다. 하나님께 기도드립니다. 아멘. Herr, wir danken dir den Morgen, dass du wieder uns zusammengebracht hast als eine Kirche gemein. Herr, wir äh, einladen die Heilige Geist am Morgen und äh, Wir danken dir, dass du treu bist zu uns jeden Tag. Amen. Sonny from Cameroon. Bei in Kunendong, Bunny Fan Jika, Bun Jamu Jika and Kundum, Ndoka Fanta Muno, Echum Bim Bim Boy Bembua, Ke Chimban in Kale, Ulumu, Jaman Ke, Jang and Bun Janga, Ke Bon Sisu, Ke Bon Bango, Nungi Yesu Christo. Amen. Debbie from Northern Ireland. Lord, we thank you that we can gather, Lord, men and women from every creed and every race, Lord. Father God, we thank you that the one thing we have, Lord, is your spirit, that one thing that we all carry, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you are, are welcome in this place. We honor you today. And we thank you, Lord, that you will bless our land in Jesus' name. I'm Lagmo and I'm from Zimbabwe. Baba, knock ten day Mangwana and Nisha tens. Knock ten day Jehovah Shamari. Knock ten day Mari. Nokuve Pukwenum cut me by no Pazora Nasi Shamari. Knock ten day Jehovah Shinamung and Mungar cut me by no Mari. Shukpain Birios and Nokuku ten day in a good chink at a community of Mazua Simari. Younger Zunjukarema, Asimari, Munesu Zuanezwa Shamari. Knock ten day Jehovah Shamari. Tawia Pamber Penu. She's a remue, the teens were shocking you, Fresh Nonox in Caperi. Amen. Uh, Sonia, Italia. I'm so happy to be here, and I want to thank the Lord for watching over us. I missed you guys, you're my family, and um, I'm just really, really grateful for the Lord watching us over this time, giving me strength, being here in New Zealand on my own and looking after your health and I just want to really feeling say thank you they are really blessed for being part of this family and feeling thank you thank you for Lord for looking after us and bringing us together again which is really really awesome today my name is Kay from Nigeria Baba Wal Siwa Juni Lenny, a Tojua, a Tojua Lani Iso, 
I saw the demo what I told you I walked by Gala or Cochesu. Amen. Kira, so no out here raw. He honore, he corore, a kitty atua. He mung a rongo kitty finua. He facaro piking a tangata katua. Hung a gear mato, he naco ho. Kiroto kitena kitena ya mato. Facatonga to wairo. Hey tohu tohu ia mato, hey oranga, hey afina, hey oranga kite mahi, moti naira, ake, 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 amen. Awesome, we're going to sing our national anthem now, and let it be a prayer over our nation this morning.
Lord. Father, we praise You in this place this morning. Father, we thank You that You are in control. Lord God, You reign over this country. Lord, You reign over our lives, Father. And Lord, we surrender our hearts to You afresh this morning. Father, we thank You that You are in this place, that Lord, also You are in people's homes this morning that are watching online. Father, You are not limited. You are not confined, Lord God. You are omnipresent. You are with us everywhere we go. So we thank You for that, God. We pray these things in Jesus' Name. Amen. Amen. Take a seat, church. I hope you're all well this morning. Welcome to the best place on the planet, the house of God. Are you excited to be in church this morning? Come on. It's so good to be back and to see all your beautiful faces. We've missed you. Um, Also, welcome to all our viewers online. Uh, We know that you're at home in your PJs, but um, God still loves you, even in your PJs. But welcome. Um, Awesome. Hey, um, celebrations. Have we had any birthdays this week? Just raise your hand. Oh, we've got a few in here today. Or have you had a birthday over lockdown that you haven't, oh, there we go, that you have not had your chocolate bar yet? All right, there's a few hands being raised, a few IOU chocolate bars in this house. That's good. (laughs) What about wedding anniversaries? Any wedding anniversaries? Over lockdown, you had a wedding anniversary. How many years? 39? Three. Amazing. Three's a good number. <laughs> Congratulations. Well done. Any other anniversaries? No? Awesome. Cool. So good to he- have you here. I think all the chocolates have been handed out. All right. We're going to tune into some notices now if you just cast your eyes on the screen for notices. Hey, Tottenham Elam Church, uh, I've just got one notice for you guys this week, and that is to keep your eyes peeled on social media and also your emails. This week, we'll, we will be announcing what's happening going forward. Uh, as you all should know, Jacinda this Monday is announcing whether we move to level one or not. If she does, that means we're going to be running back to our 10 a.m. service when everyone can come. So here's hoping that we go to level one. I just want to thank all those that give into the house. And so I'm just gonna quickly pray for the tithes and offerings. Lord, we thank you for every giver, every heart, Lord, uh, that gives into Tauranga Elam Church. Lord, we ask that you take the money, you multiply and you use it for your kingdom. We pray that you bless them um, and that, yeah, you just continue to multiply and, and use this money and bless others through it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Okay, then there was light. Hey guys, great to see you to be all to be back. It's good, hey? How are we all doing? Well, some off here are glad to be back. The rest off here are just too quiet. What's wrong? What is happening, guys? Great to have you. Thank you, worship team. Thank you guys for praying. That was so cool, wasn't it? Hey, who thought that was really cool? You know, guys, the bottom line is everybody is welcome into this building. Doesn't matter what country you're from, doesn't matter what color you are, anything else. Everybody is made in the image of God, and we love you, and it's great to have you here. You know, I'm looking at some of you think, oh, yeah, you used to be really pretty good rat bags. But God's done a great work in your life, amen, so that's pretty cool. Hey, um, just got a joke for you. Two little boys at a wedding, when one of, them, one of them leaned over to the other and asked, how many wives can a man have? His friend answered, 16. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for, not far, for. Ah, some of you are getting it. Okay, we'll move on. Okay, guys, I'm going to get into the message. And remember, watch this. Because there's been quite a lockdown with this pandemic and, and the UK and stuff, the Irish boys aren't able to go on holiday until 2021. So we got a photograph up here somewhere. So... Um, <laughs> That's actually how white we are. When Debbie and I used to go on holiday, at times you'd see a lot of the Irish guys and they were white as a bottle of milk because what they would do is they would just, they would just sleep all day and party all night. That, that's really what they've done, but let's move on from that. Hey guys, I want to say this as well. Hey, be the change you want to see. Be the change you want to see. You know, this message is called Evidence of a Spirit-Filled Life, part one. You know, last week I spoke on um, how the Spirit of God was beside us, 
then how he is in us, and then how he comes upon us. And I explained most of all about how good the Holy Spirit is. He's our comforter, he's our guide, he's our teacher, he's our counselor, he's the spirit of truth. And uh, he's kind, and he's gentle, and he's beautiful. This week I want to talk about the difference that the Spirit of God makes when he comes upon us at certain times. Is that all right? So in Acts 1 8, it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Guys, your Jerusalem really is local. When you think of it, Jerusalem is where they live, where they were at. The Judea could be the bay itself, um, Samaria could be the nation. And obviously, the ends of the earth is when you do missions overseas and stuff. But can I just really encourage you as well that, and sometimes God does this, but you know, lots of times people just get saved and right away they think, man, I want to go overseas to missions. You know, there's a mission field right where you are. And, it's, and, and you will get those opportunities, but have a heart to look out to those who are around you to bring hope and to bring help into their lives. Amen. In fact, the local could, st could stand for your family. You know, the um, Judea could be your friends, maybe people you work with, people you play sport with. You know, the Samaria. Samaria could be people who's backslidden. You know, let's never be judgmental. Let's have a heart to reach out to everyone and love them all. And the outermost parts of the earth could be people who, who really lots of people struggle with. You know, because maybe they, um, they've struggled in their life with addictions and different things they got. But you know what? God loves them. And God cares. And what he's saying is that we have received power to be, what? Witnesses in all these places. So let's do that. But I want to look at this. So here's what happened when the, on the day of Pentecost. Acts 2, verse 1 says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, and filled the whole house where they were sitting. From heaven, and oh sorry, and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Guys, I just want to say briefly that one of the evidences of being filled with the Spirit can be speaking in tongues, but it's not the only one. There's just so, so much more that we're going to really look at over the, the next few weeks and stuff, which, which will be good. But I want to say this, that it's a good thing to have. I mean, every good and perfect gift comes from God. And I've heard some people knock tongues. I don't want tongues. It's a gift from God. Don't knock anything. And there is a purpose for it that we'll look at one day. I'm not going to look at it now. I talked about it in the first service, but I feel, hey, let's leave it alone. But here's the thing. In um, 1 Corinthians 14, it talks about... Um, Follow after Jesus, follow after God, but eagerly desire spiritual gifts. So God wants to give gifts, and the Holy Spirit is the one who gives them, okay? And um, in Acts 10, 45 and 46, you'll see that when the Holy Spirit fell upon Cornelius' household, just the Holy Spirit, this is 10 years after Pentecost, guys, they started to speak in other tongues. It, it is a gift from God. And you'll see even when Peter goes down to, I think it's... Um, Ephesus and Acts 19 6 where he talks about what you know what have, what baptism have he had and he and he actually lays hands on him for the baptism of the Holy Spirit so it is very very important that we've got that so that the gifts can act the feel in their lives but what I love most of all is that those people who were filled with the Spirit they didn't stay in the upper room they didn't stay in the house they went out into the community and that's where they made a massive impact okay they made a massive impact in their community all right? We see that from the start, like to think about it, guys, this was men who were frightened when Jesus was um, crucified because, you know, they were his disciples and they were hiding in an upper room knowing that maybe they were next. You ever think about that? That they were probably thinking, man, they're going to come after us now. They've got Jesus. They're going to come after us and, and murder us. You know, they were afraid and Jesus turns up and tells them to be peaceful and stuff. But the amazing thing is, on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God came upon them, they went out, Peter went out and shared the good news of the gospel, which is pretty cool, isn't it? But can you see the difference of transformation of the Spirit of God being upon them? He went and he shared. Obviously, that word power means dynamis which means supernatural power and means miracle work and power. You know, when they prayed for the, the, the beggar, 
You know, they said, silver and gold, we've got none, but what we have in the name of Jesus, yep, stand up. And they helped him up, and he was healed there and then. That's, that's the Spirit of God. That is not them. And I've seen in the first service, guys, so I've got a hose, okay? Um, this hose, now just, just say this is my garden because I don't want to bend down, right? But just say this is my garden and the grass is getting a bit dry. If I come out of the house with my hose and I... <laughs> is the grass going to grow? I mean, what's going to happen? Nothing because it's just a hose, right? But if I connect it into the tap, turn the tap on, and water comes out, what's going to happen? The water... So it's not the hose that's bringing healing, it's the water inside it. Guys, it's not us who bring healing, it's the Holy Spirit through us. But we gotta stay connected to God in relationship. And I wanna say, guys, that's through prayer, it's through worship, and it's through being around other believers as well. We need each other to encourage each other and inspire each other. But it's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Guys, we have seen the Spirit of God move so often in people's lives. And I'm going to talk a little bit about healing first of all here, okay? Because you can look at the Bible and you can think it just happened in the Bible. And the book of Acts is full, honestly, it's full of people being raised, raised back to life again. There's people healed, there's signs and wonders all around the place through believers. And Jesus had prophesied to them that this day would come, that these things would happen. But sometimes we forget or we don't know, we can be ignorant in a a nice way, we don't know that God wants to use you and me to bring healing into other people's lives. And guys, this is spirit, soul, and body. It's a three. It's a whole three, and we got to realize that. So it can be mental, whatever, you know, giving people hope, getting beside them and loving on them. God can bring healing through that. But it can be a sickness in the body where hands are laid on and people can be healed. And I want to stay on that because the book of Acts is filled. These guys were courageous. But they preached Jesus. They didn't try to take glory to themselves. In fact, they said, listen, guys, we ain't healed this guy. This is not us who's healing him. It's faith in the name of Jesus. Why This cripple has been healed. Healed. You still with me? Good, good, good. Miracles, cripples were healed. Dorcas was dead. They prayed for us. He came back to life. Paul was stoned and he was dead. And he came back to life. There was a guy called, I think it was Aitches. And he fell from a window and died. And they laid hands on him and he came back to life. Cripples walked, people were set free. The book of Acts is full of it. And the first time I seen somebody being healed in church, I cried. Because I didn't realize that, wow, God can do that. I was obviously believing that ah, I've given my life to Jesus, so I've got to do my best to be a good boy. Guys, you can't, your best is not good enough. It's by grace and the Spirit of God in your life, right? But I thought, I'll just try to be really as good as I can be, so when I die, I'll go to heaven. That's what I thought, right? I go to Needham Church, and I'm not lifting the church up because you lift up the name of Jesus, okay? But I went to Needham Church. I've only been in two churches, guys. One in Gisborne was in Needham Church, and in this, in this church here, right? And um, I was at a service, and, and, and the pastor was saying, right, we're going to pray now for those who are sick. Please come up the front. And these people come up the front. And then he calls these other people on board to come and pray with him. And honestly, like, they, were, they looked rough as guts. You know, they really did. They looked rough as guts. You know, one of them had a skivvy on and, like, tracksuit pants and a pair of jandals. I'm serious. And I remember thinking, what? what's all this about? But he used these people to pray, and people got healed. And when I seen people getting healed, I just cried. And my, my heart was, Lord, I didn't realize that you love us enough, like even on this earth, to bring healing. You know, I just, I just broke down and I thought, wow, I want to find out more about what is sort of going on, okay? So it's got to line up with the Word of God, all right? So in Mark 16, 17, and 18, this is Jesus talking to the disciples after his death and resurrection, all right? And Jesus said these words to Sabbath. So here's a prophecy coming, and in the book of Acts, you're seeing it carried out. But he says, listen, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? It doesn't say these signs shall follow those who are pastors, although they do, 
or apostles and prophets. Yes, they do, but it says believers. That's everyone in here, if you've got Jesus in your heart, right? That in my name you shall want, cast out devils. You will speak in new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any de deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Wow, how cool is that? Now remember, guys, so we were talking about you will receive power. Hi, guys out there watching TV. I forget that you're there, so great to have you on board. Um, what, what was I just saying? You will receive power, sorry, sorry, to be my witnesses. So power, dunamis power, right? But, but he says, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, right? So I want to break this down. Look, can we throw the, the poor point up of the young girl? Anybody remember this? This was about 15 years ago, roughly. This was Hope Gray, a young girl who lived in Murrayfield. She'd been walking across the road and she got hit with a car. And she was dying. And her family phoned me and asked if I would come to the hospital and, and, and pray for her. And we were in ICU. And a little girl was lying on the bed in ICU. And the doctors had said, hey, listen, it's really touch and go. We think she probably won't make it. The helicopter had to come in to take her to Auckland, but the parents weren't allowed to travel with her. The parents had to travel in their own fecal by road. And what the doctors had said to the parents were, listen, don't be surprised that when you get to Auckland, your daughter's not alive. And they said it in a nice way, and they left. And the, the father looked at me and he said, Trev, what do you think? I said, bro, I'll be honest, your, your daughter is very sick. She's very badly beat up, you know. I said, but you know what? I believe God can heal her, and we're going to pray. And we just all joined hands, the simplest prayer, joined hands around the bed, and the prayer was, Lord Jesus, we pray you do a miracle. We pray that this young girl would not die. We pray that this young girl would recover. You know, we pray that you would guide the, 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 the doctors, the surgeons, the anesthetists, whatever people are working. Because you see, guys, God has given them gifts as well. Because it works hand in hand, amen. You know, don't, don't worry about if you've got to go to the doctor at times. Don't let anybody be super spiritual and tell you not to go. I've done that once and I nearly, I nearly died because of it. So if you feel to go, go. But, but always be praying as well. Are you with me? But the bottom line is, guys, this, the parents got the Auckland. She was still alive. She was in a coma. They had to put her on a machine to keep her alive. And um, they, you know, I remember being in Fiji. At the time, we were on an outreach in Fiji when I got the phone call to say that she'd come out of the coma. And they said, if she ever comes out of this coma, she'll be brain damaged. She came out of the coma and she wasn't brain damaged. It was, now I want to say something, guys. Realize something. It wasn't just me who prayed for her. The church were praying. There was other believers praying. But what I'm trying to get through is, guys, I believe that that was the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. That wasn't a miracle, because a miracle is, bang, instant healing, right? But that was the healing power of God going through that young girl's body. And now they, this photograph over here, because she'd broken bones in her body and stuff, this was her about, I don't know, six months after the accident, out of hospital, and she's starting to slowly walk. And this is her, she's probably older than this now, but I just thought, what a great testimony to have of the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through people. Are you with me? Yeah, and God wants to do that through your lives. Now, what have God as well? So that's at home, right? I want to show you something. Um, I think when we were in Fiji on, on, on the mission trip, right? Watch this. Sorry about the photos, guys. It's my fault, but okay, let, let's keep it up. So this is the team getting into Fiji, right? This is the houses people live in. Their conditions are terrible. But you know what? That's our team getting in. And you know what we've done? Guys, we went in and we showed the love of Jesus. You're seeing food on the table because we paid for food to be made for people to be fed. We don't just go rudely in and stuff. We, and we, then we share the gospel. We've seen people get saved. We've seen people get set free. We've seen people be blessed through doing the mission trip. And why I've got that up is what we do here, we do overseas. We don't do anything different here to what we do overseas. We do it at home first. And when we go, we show the love. What's the next one, please? Okay, this is Samoa, same type of thing. We do practical works. We might do a bit of painting and stuff, but we'll provide food. We'll show the love of Jesus to people. That top left-hand side was 11 people, whatever it is, who give their hearts to Jesus in the prison. But you know what, guys? We went in and we showed the love. But what I'm trying to say is we preach the gospel. Jesus give us the power 
you will receive power to be my witnesses. All as we done was we witnessed what God had done in our lives and how God had set us free and forgive us. And these guys responded to an altar call and give your life to Jesus. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? But I'm going to show you a little video clip. It's only less than a minute of a guy in Fiji. Watch this one. He sings as well. <laughs> My name is Emmanuel. Uh, I was very sick from 11 years. Uh, my back pain. Uh, when I said they were Pastor was praying, uh, God's presence came and touched me. Uh, and uh, Pastor didn't pray, but God's, God's presence was there, and Pastor's message uh, take control of me, and I'm in the God's presence, and God's presence came and healed my back. And I just want to thank the Lord, I just want to give Him the glory, the honor, the praise back to my God Almighty. Can you touch your toes without any pain? I can touch my toes. No pain? No pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Emmanuel. Wow, that's pretty cool, eh? And guys, the only reason I'm showing that is God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, anywhere. We, we just shared the gospel of Jesus, and we prayed, and the Spirit of God touched them, right? Now, so that's the overseas one. Let me show you something else. Has y'all been ready to go, Sander? Okay, watch this testimony. And I apologize for the quality. My fault. I'm in Australia. I'm in Bali on holidays. I'm uh, here for 11 days. On the seventh day, I was feeling ill. I think I had the flu and I was sick for in bed for one day. And I went out and Trevor came down and spoke to me. He had a beautiful prayer for me for a small time. And then within three hours, I was feeling so much better and this made my holiday so much more complete. And since this, after one day, I've been absolutely fantastic. I thank Trevor and Debbie so much for being part of my holiday. Um, and I wish them all the very best. And I'm so happy that I met these people from New Zealand. Wow. So guys, you gotta realize, Mal, lovely big guy, drinks like a fish, was on holiday in Bali. We had met him in the pool because having a swim, having, you know me, I chat to anybody, eh? And, but, but I had shared my faith with him. And what I realized was that one day he wasn't at the pool and his girlfriend was there and I, and I asked, hey, where's Mal? And she said, he's very sick, he's not feeling well. And I asked her to go and ask him if I could pray for him. And you know what? Like you heard him say, oh, he said a lovely prayer and stuff. He's, he's being really nice, eh? But I mean, seriously, I just sort of rebuked sickness off him because he had a really bad flu, like, like pneumonia sort of thing. He, he was crook. And uh, by the end of that day, he, he'd recovered. And he was so happy. Some of you seen this last year. We put photographs up. He took Debbie and I out and, and lavished all this food on us. Like he bought crayfish and he was, that's how happy he was, eh? And all of them trying to say is, guys, but we were witnessing, even on holiday, it doesn't stop. We look for opportunities not to be in people's space. We, we love people because God loves them. Does that make sense? You know, God loves them and he cares. So that's the type of thing we were being a good witness, even in that type of thing. Okay, I've got how long to go, love? Four minutes. This is going to be really interesting. What happens when, when nothing happens? Keep praying. Don't stop. Don't stop unless the person asks you not, and they say, don't pray for them anymore. And, and that's good, I can respect that. We've had some people who's asked, Lord, or has said, Pastor, I really feel God wants to take me home. Can you release me? I thought, no problem. God took him home. But you know, we got to push in at times. You can't just go either, you pray for something that doesn't happen and give up. The word of God doesn't say give up, it says persevere. Be like a little woman in Luke 18 who persevered to get her land back. It was hers. And she kept on at the judge and she kept on and she kept on and breakthrough came. But what if it doesn't come? What if, you, what if you're not successful praying and, and, and you look like you've lost the plot? or whatever? Who cares? Because the bottom line is we're stepping out, giving Jesus an opportunity. If nothing happens, it doesn't matter. You know, this day last year, 
This very day last year, at nine o'clock tonight, we buried my dad. A year exactly today. And you know what? This is not fake, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. Guys, I believe when I was going home to Northern Ireland that my dad was going to be healed. I honestly believe my dad was going to be healed. We had got this news through that from him being really sick with sepsis, that he was actually getting better. He was actually getting better when I booked the airplane ticket, but I just wanted to go home. I knew he'd been through the mill. I thought, I want to go home and just tell the old man I love him and I'm proud of him. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And you know what? I went in and I prayed on my own three or four different times in that ward myself. And I'd done everything I knew how to pray. I rebuked everything. That things didn't even exist, if you know what I mean. And I asked Jesus, cried out, Jesus, heal my dad. And he didn't. And there came a time in the spirit, I just felt the Lord saying, I'm taking him home. It's okay. And the great thing is, I'm going to see him one day. But, but here's the thing, guys. We do pray for lots of people at times and nothing happens. But don't stop praying. Please don't stop praying. Look for opportunities. I've prayed, listen, I'm being honest. I'm sharing my heart and, and, and bearing with you that I've prayed for lots of people who have cancer and, and, and they've went to be with Jesus. But I've prayed for three people who's been healed. So I'm going to give up because of their... And, and you know what? I've got to be honest. Nobody's batting on, on a wicket 100%. I don't care who you are. You know, come on. Let's keep reaching out and for God. Amen. So what have I got left, honey? What's the time? Two minutes. Witnesses, eh? Witnesses is, it, 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 it talks in Acts 4.33. With great power. This is talking about the, the believers. With great power, give the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them. Witness means testimony. They testified, guys, listen, they testified about the death and the resurrection of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins. And the Spirit of God moved on that because they were a great testimony. But what I want to say is this, guys, what is our witness? What is our witness as believers of God? What are people seeing? And I know we're not perfect. I know in God's eyes we are because of what Jesus done. But you know what? Have we forgiven people? Are we loving towards what are people saying? Because I'm telling you, the people said themselves that these guys, they could see they were changed men. They could see that they had changed from being afraid to being full of courage. And I said, they knew they had been with Jesus. Guys, our witness, I'm talking lifestyle. I'm not talking about getting into religion. I'm talking about as you walk with the Lord in relationship, are you letting them deal with your anger? Are you, are you giving them a chance to deal with maybe stuff you're struggling with? I don't know what that is. But trust God and let God. People should see a difference. Amen? People should. So finish with this. Be a good witness by your lifestyle because we're being transformed. My lifestyle is better now. And I, I'm not perfect. Ask my wife. In fact, don't ask her because she'll tell you too many truths. No, I'm joking. But I'm going to say this. My life is being transformed. Be not conformed to things as well, but be transformed by My life is being transformed. I am not the same person I was 29 years ago. And God still strengthened me and molded me and formed me and everything else. You with me? So I want to finish with this. There's a story in the Bible and there was a guy who had 2,000 demons. It's not fake news. This is the good news. The truth. This guy was messed up. He'd been into everything. Opened everything up for the enemy to come in. 2,000 demons, guys. He was in the graveyard. When I was a kid, we used to go to the graveyard. Now and again, when it was dark, to see if there was any ghosts. And everybody was holding on to each other's shirt and pushing somebody else to go first and all that stuff. But you know, this guy had said that they tried to chain him up and he would break the chains. He run about naked. He was a looper. He was possessed. But Jesus turns up and takes care of it. Instantly, right? Sets the guy free. The guy's so excited. He said, Jesus, I want to come with you. Jesus said, no, no, no. Don't come with me. This is what I want you to do. Stay where you are. Listen to this. In Mark 5, 19, Jesus did not let him go with him, but he said, go home to your family. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Tell them how kind he has been to you. So the man went away in the area known as the 10 cities, the Decapolis, obviously, and began to tell how much Jesus had done for him. 
and all the people were amazed. Do you know what? It wasn't just the talk guys. They were amazed because they could see the guy was in his right mind. They could see the guy wasn't dealing on stuff that they used to deal before. Are you with me? They could see he had clothes on. Thank God none of you had to run about naked before you came to church. <laughs> But, but, he, but they, what I'm trying to say is, guys, they've seen the difference. Um, come on. They should see the fruit of the Spirit in their lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, and humility. That's the one, yeah? That's right. They, are people seeing that? That's what I'm saying. Are people seeing that in our lives? Yeah, you're going to make mistakes, but in general, are they seeing that? Are they seeing us being kind? Are they seeing us being forgiven? Are they seeing see us as loving on them? Does that make sense? You know, so I'm finishing with that, guys. And this is what I want to say. People should see change. There should be fruit, proof of the fruit in their lives. Hopefully, some of my friends can see the difference in my life over the last 29 years. You know, I just hoping that. And I'm hoping and believing that through that, that God would use that to draw them by spirit. So can we stand? I'm going to pray. And then Millie's going to come up to close the service. Thank you, Jesus. Next week, I'll be speaking on the joy uh, evidence of a spirit-filled life, the joy of the Spirit and being led by the Spirit. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that, Lord, that you are awesome. Thank you for the work that you're doing in our lives. Lord, we just yield our lives afresh to you today. We yield our mind, our will, our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings, Holy Spirit. And we pray, Lord, that you would fill us afresh in Jesus' name, that we would be great witnesses in this city. Lord, that we would love people the way you love them that we would get beside them and encourage them. Lord, we would take opportunities to pray for people, people who are unwell, people who are struggling with different things. Lord, that we would take the opportunity to pray and let your Holy Spirit move in their lives. Lord, I pray that we would be a shining light, the salt of the earth this week in this city, in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone who loved the Lord said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Thank you, Millie. Amen. Let's give Pastor Trevor a hand, eh? <laughs> awesome. Great word. Hey, um, I just want to give an opportunity this morning. Maybe there's someone in this place that doesn't know Jesus or there's someone online right now that is tuned in that doesn't know Jesus. You've never invited Jesus into your life to have a personal relationship with him. Can I tell you that he is a good God? He is a God that breaks every addiction, every barriers, everything that tries to hold us back from living our best life. That's the God, the Jesus that I serve. And you know, you can have that same Jesus in your life this morning. And I just want to give you an opportunity to um, invite him into your life. Um, you know, he can change you, just as Pastor Trevor was talking about. He loves you. He loves you unconditionally. You know, maybe you feel like, you know, your family or those that you've trusted have let you down. But can I tell you that God will never let you down, that he is faithful and that he loves you unconditionally? That's the God that I'm talking about. That's the Jesus I'm talking about this morning. So what I want to do is just ask everyone just to bow their head, close their eyes. If you're online right now, there's a little box that's going to come up and it's going to say, raise your hand. If you want to invite Jesus into your life right now, we give you this opportunity. For those in this place today, I'm going to count to three. All you have to do is simply raise your hand, and then I'm going to say a real simple prayer with you that will invite Jesus into your heart. That's as simple as it gets. So right now, if that's you, you want to invite Jesus into your life. You want this God that I'm talking about, this Jesus that I'm talking about to change your life, to um, come on you and love you like I'm talking about unconditionally, then just raise your hand on three. One, two, three. Is there anyone here that would like to invite Jesus into their heart? Just raise your hand. If you're online right now, just press that little button that says raise your hand. And we're going to say a prayer. Awesome. Just open your eyes. We're going to say a prayer together for those that may have raised their hand this morning. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and I need a saviour. I ask that you would forgive me for my sins. And right now, Lord, I invite you into my heart. Use me for your purposes. In Jesus' name, amen.